Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode in VAPCS IGNU. We are your go-to stuff for all the things in IGNU BA Psychology Honors. Whether you are starting a new journey with IGNU or here's some last minute exam prep or just seeking some clarity on those topics, you are in the right place. And if you are joining us for the very first time, a huge warm welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in and do us a solid favor by hitting the subscribe button, please. All right. As you know, in this series, we are discussing BPCC 102 Biopsychology. Today, we are talking about the fifth unit, Hemispheric Specialization, part 2. Okay, in this part, we are going to understand the split brain in human as well as some methods to study cerebral naturalization. You ready? Let's begin. So, we have been talking about how cutting the corpus callosum, the connection between the two hemispheres of the brain, affected cats. Right? Now, let's dive into how it works with human. I mean, that was the ultimate goal, right? Imagine this. There are cases where people with severe epilepsy had an operation called commissarotomy. This is where they cut through the bands of nerves connecting the two halves of the brain. Those who have had this surgery are called split brain people. Okay, so to understand how this surgery impacts human behavior, scientists like Sperry and Gutzinger, they did some experiments on these split brain patients. The idea was pretty similar to what Sperry did with cats, restricting information to just one side of the brain. Here's how they did it. Okay, so patients, they stared at the center of a screen. For a like super quick 0.1 second, a stimulus popped up either on the left or right side. It was fast enough for them to see, but not long enough to move their eyes. Then they were asked to do different things with their hand under the ledge, making sure the information didn't cross over to the other side of the brain. Okay, can you guess what they found? Okay, first. Split brain patients, just like the lab animal, have two separate hemispheres with their own thoughts, skills, and memories. But unlike animals, the hemispheres of the split brain patients aren't equal in abilities. One side might be better at certain things than the other. Okay? Let's look into the evidence that shows how the two halves of the brain in split brain patients work independently and have different skills. Number one, visual and actual stimuli. Imagine you are a split brain patient. Just imagine, okay? They showed you a picture or put an object in front of your hands. If it was on the right side, it activated the left side of the brain and you could easily name the object or grab it with your right hand. But when the pictures or object was on the left side, activating the right side of your brain, things got interesting. You might say you saw nothing, you couldn't grab the right object with your left hand, and it had no clue about what was in your left hand. Okay? So this suggests that each side of your brain is doing its own thing when it comes to processing information. Now the second evidence was cross queuing. Now let's talk about how the two sides of your brain communicate, not through nerves, but also in a sneaky way called cross queuing. They asked you to name colors shown in one side. At first, you weren't doing much better than guessing, okay? but over time, your performance improved. And here's the tip. It wasn't because your brain halves were talking through neural pathways, no. It was more like head shakes or frowns cleaving in one side of your brain about the wrong answer. Okay, and number three, we have doing two things simultaneously. Guess what? You can multitask. Each side of your brain can handle different tasks at the same time. In fact, in some visual tasks, split brain people even outshine people with the whole brains. Okay. Number fourth, we have the Z lens. Now for the visuals that take longer than a split second to process, we've got the Z lens. Okay, it's like a special contact lens that keeps your visual input limited to just one side of your brain. So if you're reading a book, it ensures only one half of your brain is doing the reading, no matter where your eye moves. 
the special lens was kind of like an opaque lens. Okay, so this evidence strongly suggests that each half of the brain in the split brain patients is bit of an independent thinker doing its own thing and they are not exactly mirror image of each other. Okay, all right. Now let's explore some methods that scientists used to study how our brain works and its lateralization, meaning how different tasks are divided between the left and right side of the brain. Now, a long time ago, there was this idea called phrenology. It linked the shape of your skull to your behavior. Fortunately, it's a pseudoscience, meaning not really backed by solid evidence. Girl, the guy behind it, thought like there were 27 skull bumps, each tied to a specific behavior. But today, we have moved way past that. Okay. Today, we have other methods. Number one, unilateralism. Second, split brain studies. These two we have already discussed. Scientists study what happens when one side of the brain is damaged or when the connection between the two sides is cut. Okay. And number third, we had the sodium amtel test. This test, also known as the WADA test, helps before neurosurgery, especially for epilepsy. They inject a bit of a sodium amtel into one of your carotid arteries. It puts the hemisphere to sleep for a bit, allowing doctors to check out the other side's skill in things like language and memory. And number fourth, we have dichotomic listening test. This one's non-invasive and quite popular. Participants wear earphones and hear different sounds in each ear at the same time. Kimura did a study where people had to report you no know, pair of digits. Turns out, most could remember digits from their right ear better. It hint that the left side of the brain was specialized for language. On number fifth, we have functional brain imaging. Imagine checking out the brain without poking it. Various techniques like fMRI, CT scan, PET scan, EEG, MEG, you know, they give us a peek into the brain structure and activity. So when you do something like reading, they use PET scan or fMRI to see which area lights up telling us what parts of the brain are busy with different tasks. Okay, now let's recap quickly the unit 5. So our brain, number 1, our brain hemispheres have contralateral connection with the body, meaning the left hemisphere controls the right side and vice versa. Another point, studies indicate that each hemisphere has certain specialized function, a concept known as hemispheric specialization or lateralization of function. Okay. Similarly, Paul Broca and Hugo Carleypen were influential in developing the ideas of cerebral lateralization. Okay. Also, Myers and Sperry's 1953 experiment with cats showed that both hemispheres can act independently and the corpus callosum transfers information between them. Similarly, Sperry and Gersinger conducted experiments on split brain patients to understand the effects of commissarotomy on human behavior. Five methods including unilateral liaison, split brain patient studies, the sodium mtel test, the dichotic listening test and the functional brain imaging are employed to study cerebral lateralization. All right, with this the video ends here today. In next video we will be with unit 6. But before leaving I want to extend a huge shout out to every one of you for watching. Your support means everything. If you have got any questions or want to share your thoughts, don't hold back. Drop your comments in the section below or send us a DM on our social media channels where all is. And of course, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and please, please, please smash the subscribe button if you already haven't done it. Now, if you want quick notes and updates, follow us on Instagram, right? And join us on our Telegram. You'll find all the necessary links down in the description. Lastly, Remember to stay curious, stay engaged and always keep in mind that you got this. See you later.